the Sports City doors are wide open at the free fall right now, but we are going to let the host kind of keep this in queue because we got a lot of people that called in for a special <laughs> night around Sports City. But we do have our guest in the building, DVD, DeMarcus Van Dyke. Welcome to the show, brother. How are you feeling this evening? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself, dog? Doing all right, man. We actually kicked off the show a little while ago, and uh, everybody's basically in house ready to get, get some of these questions thrown at you and, and see how you feel on this uh, thing that's going on so far. But how do you feel this far? I feel so good. I, I feel good, man. You know, uh, I think you say in that field, so it's are living out right now. Hey, DeMarcus, how you doing? This is uh, Brian Hughes, uh, West Coast correspondent out here. Um, if you could, I want to go back to your days at Miami a little bit here. And, you know, I always like to end on a high note. So I, I want to start on a sour note, if you will. Miami's come, over, come under a lot of scrutiny over the booster, Nevin Shapiro, uh, you know, and some of the quote-unquote – uh, you know, things that have gone on per se at Miami. I'm not going to ask you to implicate or anything like that, but as a college athlete, how prevalent would you say on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being nothing and 10 being almost every school, would you say things like this are at every major university, whether it be players getting, you know, dinners bought for them, uh, you know, what what the NCAA would, quote, deem as, uh, you know, not appropriate behavior? Well, see, I really don't know because um, I wasn't involved in the allegation that Nevis Perrell said happened in Miami, so I really can't say what happened or what that happened so, but other schools, but I, I really don't know what happened to other schools because I was at Miami all four years, so I don't know what happened at LSU and uh, the USD, something like that. So I can't even talk about what happened there because I wasn't there, so I'm not going about that. All right, DeMarcus. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I want to go through a lot of the process that um, that you went through and going towards the NFL, um, and, and particularly – uh, I mean, you you went to the East West Shrine game, and then you uh, then you also were were picked up and uh, and after doing well at the East West, you got picked up and went to the Senior Bowl game afterwards. Was there a big jump in talent between the guys you faced at the East West and the guys you faced at the Senior Bowl? Uh. I won't say that. I, I just said um, I probably said it just the hype around the game, you know. But East West Shrine game is not as huge as a senior bowl, so so it was a, a lot of great talent at the uh, East West Shrine game. Guys like uh, Left Gene, uh, Terrence Tolliver. At the senior bowl, you had guys like um, Dana Hankerson who played at Miami with me, and uh, Austin Pettis and um, Niles Paul, guys like that. All right, all right. Well, the market now, now. Like, like we 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 actually discuss this outside of the show. You know, I'm a, I'm a Hurricane fan, man, and I, I don't want to jump into it as, as in depth as everybody else may want to, man, because it actually hurts me that my boys got the magnifying glass, or our boys have the magnifying glass over them. But you know, be it as it may, you're in the league right now, and the standpoint that everybody's looking at Miami, does this actually, you know, hinder your situation moving forward with the Oakland organization, or? Do you just, you know, take it one step at a time and let life go on? You got to let uh, life go on. Cause right now, we, we're still a you, man. You know, you're going to have everybody uh, doubting us. So, but and like, like I said before, it's just an allegation right now. So, we, uh, we'll we bump that from it. Hey, DeMarcus, this is Brian again. Um, I want to go through the process a little bit of, you know, the combine when you were there. And, you know, I think you can physically prepare for a lot of the drills and events that you participate at. But the one thing you really can't prepare for, per se, uh, is the, you know, is the the interviews, is the questions that are going to be asked, things like that. Um, while you were at the Combine, what was the craziest question that a team asked you? Uh, yeah, so the craziest question I got at the Combine was probably, uh, let me see, one team asked me that I wear, wear jock strap or tights. 
<laughs> I was like, huh? I used to talk to my cousin. I was like, it depends on the game. But, you know, you have, sometimes you have questions that like, throw you off to see, like, like you got, like, like some, 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 some teams think you got everything practiced already. So they're trying to throw a question that just to, like, throw you off track. But other than that, you'll get a crazy question every now and then. Well, uh, DeMarcus, you broke the – cornerback record at the Combine, previously held by your current teammate, Stanford Route. Yeah. Do you give him a little little jab, a little edge there, and and, uh, and have you two raced maybe in training camp? Oh, no. I, um, right now, I'm a rookie, so I'll try not to step on my toe, you know, you know, we still had a rookie night uh, coming up at, at the end of the year, so I'm not trying to pay a big old bill, you feel me? So I just kind of keep everything quiet, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't raced Stanford, but he's pretty fast. So one day we race, I think I get him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Demarcus, uh, this is Brian again. You know, uh, you mentioned that you're a rookie, a third third round pick by the Oakland Raiders, and w- one of the big things that they do to rookies, as we know, is hazing. Whether it be tape people to the goalposts, they we all seen what they did to Tim Tebow's hair, uh, where they cut it off. Did you get any kind of hazing or any kind of quote unquote rookie treatment, uh, even though the off season was shortened? Yeah, so when we came in, like uh, you know, we're, uh, Richard Seymour was like the veteran on our team, so he made sure like for the first game, all the rookies had to get their hair cut. And uh, you know, the DBs they cut my hair like that. And um, I know every every time every Tuesday during during training camp, I had to fill up. The room was snacked. Me and other rookie Tim Chagwas, Sterling Moore, and uh, Zach Etheridge. So we had to fill up the, the room with like snacks, sunflower, like sunflower seeds, like Gatorade, stuff like that. <laughs> okay, well, well let, let me throw a question at you right now that I, I know I really can't Ooh. get a full answer out of this. Only played two games this far, but so far from what you've seen out of the uh, the Broncos matchup and in the Bills matchup, what offense? you know, surprise you as far as, you know, have the Broncos offense surprise you on stuff that you haven't seen down at the U or what the Bills had done, you know, in that last-minute comeback? And, and how do you feel about that last-minute comeback that you had, uh, or that you guys actually faced up in Buffalo? Well, the offense that, uh, that I'm facing right now is, is different from college, you know, because mainly at college you, you get the spread, the spread offense like that, you uh Probably a probably a wing T like you know the Ted, but right now I'm playing a bunch of post offenses and with, uh, with, with, uh, great quarterbacks, great receivers. But um, the comeback it was kind of uh, depressing, man. You know, because we're up two one three going to half. One thing I got to say about the game, we only got to finish, and uh, we'll be okay. Demarcus, um, I, I've got a, I've got another question for you here. Um, I, I thought your rookie hazing was probably going one on one with Larry Fitzgerald your first game out. I mean, you played rather well, in my opinion, because, I mean, the guy made a few circus catches, but you were not really caught out of position. Um, Can you explain the experience of coming straight into the league and going one-on-one with probably one of the better wide receivers in it? It was was kind of crazy, but uh, I remember um, remember going going in the game, and I was like, man, like like going to the bus, I was like, man, you know what? You know, it'd be crazy if I go against Fitzgerald when I pray for the game. And actually, I did it. I was like, man, it's crazy. Man. But uh, he was um, a good receiver, you know, big guy. I had the guy I talked to him. He told me I, he told me I should have went for the ball for the interception. But other than that, over, overall, great sport. Hey, DeMarcus, uh, you know, one thing that didn't get a lot of media hype outside – of Oakland slash Denver is there was a couple times in the Denver matchup uh, where you actually covered Brandon Lloyd. And Brandon Lloyd made a gesture like he was slitting his throat. And a lot of people thought that gesture was towards you. Uh, you care to elaborate on that? Uh, I don't want to talk about what he again. So, uh, he made a, a gesture like that. He made a gesture with his with his hand like he was, you know, like cutting his throat. Uh, and, and a lot of the media are saying that that gesture was towards you because you were covering him on the play. Uh, any, any, uh, you can't elaborate or, or tell us, you know, what that gesture was about? 
Oh, it's my first time uh, hearing that, so I don't I'm just I'm, I'm just talking about it. I'm first time hearing this right here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, well, my next. Oh, I'm sorry, Ty. Go ahead. Well, well, no, I just want to ask you, Demarcus. Like, well, since you got through, you know, two weeks of football in the NFL right now, you know, what what goals do you have with the with the season at hand right now? You guys look pretty impressive, and uh, with the Raiders actually sweeping the AFC West last year. Do you guys actually, you know, stay motivated and trying to knock that off again in the division, or do you guys kind of take it as a game by game situation? Well, you know, coach, you you want to take it by game by game. You know, uh, this next game is the Jets, which is a great team. They got a great coach, uh, Rick Ryan, and great quarterback, um, Mark Sanchez. I feel like I go out there and just play a game, but um, right now my my role this this year just to have my team win games whenever I get in the, whenever I get in the game and just make plays when I get in the game. Um, yeah, my next question is that you, uh, like I said, you ran the fastest cornerback time ever in, in combine history. Did, once you cross the finish line, did you start scouting, um, you know, real estate options in Oakland or, because I mean, <laughs> the team has a, a high reputation for taking, track guys at those speed positions. So did you have a feeling that once you fin- you crossed the line at the 40-yard dash that you were, you were dead set to go to Oakland? Uh, not really because uh, after I ran a football my, the, the second 40, which was the fast one, uh, I was kind of upset because I kind of like stumbled at the block. So I was like, man, I probably ran slow. But after I gave my time, they said I ran fast. I was like, well, I guess I, I did. I actually did good. But, um, you know, I can't really. I, I know they have a history of taking the fastest guy to combine, but uh, I know when Coach Wilson came out, it worked me out at Miami. He said I had great feet and great hips, so I guess that's one of the reasons they drafted me. Hey, Demarcus, this is Brian. Um, you and uh, your former teammate uh, Brandon Harris down there in Miami formed uh, a pretty dominant duo at, at cornerback. Now, the competition you face at the NFL level is obviously. Uh, higher than it is in college. What kind of adjustments, we know you have the speed, but what kind of adjustment, what kind of things do you need to work on technique-wise in order to take your game to the next level? I part of is uh, just attacking the ball more, you know, just being more aggressive towards the ball. Because in college, uh, you know, in college, you, you, you don't play as great receivers every week like that. You probably have a, a big receiver this week, then Another one down the road, but NFL is a is a every week got the best of the best. So you know, I just got to attack the ball and be be prepared when I'm when I'm on on, on the field. Well, good. Okay, well, oh, go uh, you want you want to clean that up or? Okay. Well, well, here goes another situation. Well, I, I know that you're you're in a uh, a division where they throw the heck out the ball, so. What what drives you? What gives you push? And and also within you know what you've seen or heard thus far, who talks the most trash that really gets under your skin that makes you want to work harder, whether it be in your own locker room or around the league or in your respective division alone. Uh, so I only been in the league probably two, two weeks. I really don't know who talks more trash, but uh, uh, my motivation is to uh, just be the best in my at my position. You know, uh, you know, growing up. Nobody wanted to be coming second, so I go to be number one once I lead the league. You're playing the Jets this week. Um, care to give us a, an insight into what we should expect uh, from this game? Um, now, I don't want you to go too deep and give away your entire game plan here, but how do you plan on uh, kind of uh, halting this this offense going uh, here in New York? Well, uh, the Jets is a pretty good team, man. You know, they got a uh, Great receivers, great running back, great offensive line, a great defense, a great defensive team. So they're all around good team. We just got there and just play uh, open with the ball and we'd be okay. And they got um, we just got out there play ball. And I know I probably fight like a, a slugfest, you know, with two great defenses. So it'd be, it'd be a good game. Hey, Demarcus, this is Brian again. You know, a lot of times, you know, we we had we had your teammate Quinn Groves on uh, last month. And one of the things that, you know, we want people here at Sports City to to know is we want want people to get to kind of